Here in front of me is Hunix. Hunix is a Linux distribution specifically designed for privacy-oriented individuals. It comes pre-built with a whole bunch of privacy-based services, including IP address randomization, a built-in Tor browser, login console lockdown, live OS mode, DNS protocol leak protection, and much more. Now, Hunix is just one of many tools used to preserve your anonymity and privacy online. And depending on your personal security threat model, privacy could be really important to you. Implementing and maintaining privacy is tough in the world of big tech and the I have nothing to hide argument and just general complacency to privacy, but it's not impossible. And in today's video, I'm gonna be overviewing a layered approach one can take to preserve their online privacy. And even implementing just a few of these things can really help your online footprint not be well tracked. Now, a while back, I created a very similar video talking about how hackers hide their own online identities. And there is a lot of overlay between this and what hackers do, but our threat model is different. Right now, we're just trying to preserve our own privacy. And well, if the FBI is listening in, I promise I, this isn't, I just, I'm just trying to educate. I promise. Don't, don't flag me. A few items to note. Number one is that if you were to implement a privacy oriented threat model, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be 100% private online. One mishap, one mistake, and your identity could be revealed. Number two is that privacy and anonymity are not the same. I, like many others, use them interchangeably, but ultimately it comes down to definitions. Anonymity refers to concealing or hiding your identity, maybe through creating a fake persona, while privacy refers to the state of being able to control who and who does not have your information and what they can do with that. And I use them kind of interchangeably within this video, but ultimately they are different. Number three is the constant battle between privacy and security and convenience. Ultimately, one has to balance convenience and privacy. You can go to the Tor node browser and wait five minutes if you want to, but is that really convenient? Ah, uh, yes, the Tor browser. Just gonna take five minutes to probably. So for the average user, like I said, there are a few things that you can do to even just enhance your online footprint and make sure you can conceal your identity to a lot of the big providers. So with that, let's get started into layer one. All right, so hardware refers to the physical device, physical medium that you're using to get online. And ultimately, it's going to be some sort of computer and laptop. Now, if you are somebody who is really trying to remain private, you can acquire a laptop or a computer through a prepaid debit card or a privacy-oriented cryptocurrency. Now, you're also going to want to go ahead and buy a fireproof safe. And every single time you are done with the session, you need to log out and put that in your safe. Now, that provides almost no convenience, but if you're really trying to remain 100% private and ensure security in that way. Now, one setting you are going to want to make sure it's turned on is full disk encryption or FDE. FDE encrypts all of your data on the hardware level by using an encryption key. Ideally, set the encryption key bit length to the highest setting possible. FDE only prevents unauthorized access on the hardware level, if so if somebody actually gets physical access to your device. Next is an ephemeral OS on a live USB. Ideally, you would want to wipe the native operating system and install an operating system such as Unix or Tails onto your device. So Windows has been very well known to breach a lot of its privacy controls by default. Uh, so ideally, you would want to install a privacy-oriented operating system. Now, if you want to keep Windows or Mac OS, make sure to turn off all of the default settings, and you can use tools like Win10 Privacy uh, to wipe a whole bunch of registry keys and everything else that has to deal with privacy. So if you're a regular individual, I turned off all of my, uh, you know, Windows privacy things by default and called it a day. The network layer refers to the exchange of data and information between interconnected computing devices. Now, ultimately, I'm going to break this down into the local area network and the wide area network are also known as the internet. So on the local area network, your laptop uh, is interfacing with a router. And there are a few settings that you want to make sure are randomized. The first is 
the MAC address. Now, a MAC address is a unique identifier attached to your hardware device, specifically your Wi-Fi adapter card, and it provides some unique information. You want to make sure you have a tool, a script, or even um, a live OS, which will automatically rotate your MAC address for you. And ultimately, the MAC address doesn't get exchanged beyond the local router, but if somebody were on a public Wi-Fi network, such as at a coffee shop, it just provides an extra layer of anonymity, I guess, or obfuscation. In addition, as a small bonus, you probably want to randomize your host name, so you don't want to be using John's laptop as an example. Just make it some random sequence of characters. So on the router front, if you are using an ISP issued router, which most of us are doing, you want to make sure that you are on a segmented network away from all of your other children or guests. You want to harden your router and this can be done by wiping the default firmware, which may break the warranty on your ISP issued router and installing a tool such as PFSense, which both functions as a router and also have some built-in firewall capabilities. You wanna block as much traffic as possible. Now, ideally, you wanna be using a segmented separate device. And I came across a really cool project called the Tor Box, which is a Tor router built on a Raspberry Pi. Tor Box can route all data transfers through the Tor network and not just including your computer, but also tablets and phones. So a really cool project. All right, so next is the internet front. This is where things get very complicated. There's a lot of different data points that one could use to track you. So starting out with the domain name system DNS. DNS queries are not encrypted by default. So that means you probably want to use not your ISP issued resolver, but some other uh, cloud service, maybe such as Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 or Quad 9's 9.9.9.9. Whatever you use, it's up to you, uh, but you definitely want to use your non-default DNS provider. By default, Hunix uses Tor as its DNS resolution service. And Hunix actually doesn't recommend that you use some sort of third-party provider such as Cloudflare or Quad9 for a long period of time. Uh, so they use the Tor network. You can use whatever you want. Next is IP address randomization. And this is where it gets very complex because there are many different services one can use to preserve their privacy or at least enhance their privacy and anonymity online. There are three main services, proxies, VPNs, and Tor. So proxies act as the intermediary between a device and a server, and they send requests on behalf of a client. And there are many different proxies out there. I recommend looking into proxies chains as one particular solution if you're trying to hop your network traffic between different proxies. Next is VPNs, virtual private networks. Now they create a connection or a tunnel between your device and a server. And oftentimes there is an intermediary device that sits in between, kind of similar to a proxy setup. VPNs can hide the real IP address of the user by connecting to a server first, which then requests that particular server resource. Now, there are many different VPN providers out there. Uh, ultimately, choose whichever one best suits you. And one thing to keep in mind is VPNs, they say they don't log, but you always have to have that trust no one mentality when it comes to privacy. So uh, choose whichever one, go do your research. And then finally is Tor. Now Tor is a network service which provides optimal privacy and security for its users. And it does this through the Tor node or relay network. When internet traffic traverses over the Tor network, it's encrypted by default and is passed through a whole bunch of nodes to get to its final destination. Each node only knows the previous node and the next node within its chain. So you can bounce your connection between say 15 different nodes and that adds a layer of obfuscation to your overall connection. Tor can be accessed through the Tor browser or it can also be accessed natively within an OS such as Hunix or Tails. You can layer these three services together. Uh, so for example, you could start by navigating on the Tor browser and then connecting to your VPN client. The Hunix documentation space has a really nifty 
overview section of what you can do, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Next is the use of a virtual private server or VPS. Basically, it's a desktop that lives out in the cloud and is hosted by a cloud provider. There, you can do whatever you want. You can connect. And um, if you're looking to browse anonymously or maybe just set up a temporary environment, a VPS can be used. Finally, disable JavaScript and cookies. They're notoriously bad for breaching users' privacy. There are different browser plugins you can use, but you should just at least disable third-party cookies and as much JavaScript as possible not to make your internet connection look like, uh, well, the 90s. All right, layer three is communication and transactions. Ultimately, this refers to the exchange of information between two parties. For any type of messaging application, such as instant messaging, email providers, really anything, you want to make sure that end-to-end -end encryption is enabled by default and is offered. Now, end-to-end -end encryption uh, only allows the sender and recipient to see the message because they only possess the encryption key on their devices. For instant messaging applications, I recommend looking into Signal, Telegram, Wire, Threema. Ultimately, Telegram and Signal are probably gonna be your best bet because of their widespread support and popularity. And when it comes to your email provider, there are plenty out there. I recommend looking into ProtonMail, which is a well-known privacy-first email solution provider. ProtonMail uses end-to-end -end encryption by default, and it does this through the use of the open PGP cryptographic system. It's also open source, it's very user-friendly, and it's completely free. Uh, if you want to check out more about ProtonMail, there's a link in the description below. For your online searches, you want to make sure not to use the defaults because who likes Microsoft Edge? You want to make sure you have some sort of tool it preserves and is built around privacy. So for browsers, I recommend looking into Firefox, Brave and the new Movad browser, which also provides a VPN solution. For search engines, I recommend taking a look into DuckDuckGo, their start page. There's also this really cool project I just found out, which is called Cirex. Uh, it's a meta search engine which aggregates like 70 plus search engines together. Uh, and you can self host this search engine or use available instances online. Uh, again, link in the descriptions below for all of these tools. For file level storage, use Veracrypt to apply a file level encryption. Veracrypt uses drive volumes to create an encrypted container and it's password protected. So you can put all of your files, sensitive information into a Veracrypt container and then have that encrypted by default and password protected. I mean, I literally just said that. <laughs> The final layer is OPSEC, or operational security. OPSEC refers to revealing vital or sensitive information through one's technical controls, their online identity and footprint, and even one's physical habits. And OPSEC can be used to reveal an adversary's identity because, well, humans are valuable, they're predictable, and OPSEC is used notoriously to reveal one's identities. If you're trying to implement optimal OPSEC, you shouldn't do what I'm doing here, which is posting your face on some random YouTube platform video. What you want to ensure is that you're posting as minimal as information as possible. Now, in my opinion, proper OPSEC comes down to building and then maintaining a system that's consistent. Uh, and so there's a few techniques you can use to help with building better OPSEC. First is the use of a sock puppet. It's a random username or persona that you create online that has nothing to do with you. So whether that's an online form, an Instagram post, you want to make sure no information is revealed. Uh, and yeah, they're called sock puppets. What the heck are those? Next is the use of one's writing style. So for example, if I always spell the word okay as okay, that can provide some information. For the majority of us, OPSEC really comes down to location sharing and social media use. So try to limit all social media use or posting Instagram reels, Snapchat stories with your location um, because that provides an entry or data point for users to look at what you're doing. Anyone has access to social media, they can scrape this information. And so try to limit or just completely stop social media use if you're trying to uh, have better OPSEC. Not that you're going to have authorities coming after you. Uh, 
you shouldn't. You're just trying to implement privacy, right? That's all you're trying to do. Okay, well, anyway, hopefully you've learned something new in this layered approach. Um, even if you use some of these technologies, some pre-built tools that can really help drastically with your online footprint and preserve your privacy, especially from these big tech companies. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Do you Can you have privacy in the 21st century? Is there a such thing as online privacy? Leave a comment in the description below. And FBI, I promise I'm just here for education purposes only. Yeah, well, until the next video, have a good day.